United Methodist Church of Merced worship for April 5th, 2020, this Palm Sunday morning. We thank you for joining with us in worship this morning. Um, here we seek to know the love of God, to grow in the ways of Christ, and to go and serve our neighbors. All are welcome into this worship, and all means all welcome. We're glad to join you in spirit and to raise our voices, lift up our prayers, and unite in the glorifying and honoring body of Christ. Right here, right there, wherever we are, wherever you are, the body of Christ comes together right here, right now. Joining our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to worship and to praise God. We are all one body. We pray God's love and presence is made very real to you in this time together. As we are moved by the Spirit, as we are filled with the Word of God, as we come closer to God, may our thanksgiving and our praise, may our prayers and our worship, may our collective presence across the miles over the internet reach you and bind us together in love of Christ, in love for God, in love for each other. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a few announcements before we continue into worship this morning. Uh, first off, we are still doing the daily devotionals. If you would like to get a word of inspiration every morning via email, all you need to do is request that through adam, A-D-A-M, at umcmerced.org. Hard copies can also be requested by calling 209-722-5777. Our food pantry continues to serve the community in Merced and beyond. To this moment, we have fed over 250 families in the last couple of weeks. Uh, truly, we are in need of donations for funds and donations of items. If you can help with pasta or cereal or beans or meat um, or funds, <laughs> please contact us. Again, you can call the church at 209-722-5777 or you can donate online at umcmerced.org and then hit the button that says donate. If it is for the food pantry specifically, please put that in the memo and we'll make sure that it goes to that. Our phones are being answered. Feel free to call if you need or if you would like a prayer or assistance. Um, have an administrative question or in need of spiritual direction or just a listening ear. We're here to help. Give us a holler 209-722-5777. We are supported financially through tithes and gifts, and again, those can be done electronically at umcmerced.org forward slash donations, or mailed to the church, United Methodist Church of Merced at 899 Yosemite Parkway in Merced, California, 95340. That's it for right now. Let's go into this space of worship. I invite you to take a moment. To be still in the presence of God, to join your hearts, your minds, your spirit with the body of Christ as we come together to worship and to praise God. Let us pray. We thank you, holy and loving God, for sending your Son to show us the way for our lives, the way for us to be set free, that we might not just have life, but life abundant in you. We praise you as we enter Holy Week, the start of the journey towards the power of the cross, the victory of resurrection, and the rich truth that Jesus Christ truly is our King of Kings. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We offer you our worship, our praise for you is holy and just. We declare your love stands forever, for your loving kindness endures forever. We thank you that you are far greater than our ways, your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. We thank you that you have a plan to save us. Thank you that you make all things new. As you hear our prayers, know our hearts. Help us to stay strong and true to you. Help us not to follow after the voice of the crowds or their actions, but to 
Press close, be drawn nearer to you, to hear your whispers, to pick up our crosses, to follow you alone. We praise you, we bless you. May our worship, our praise, our learning, our seeking, and our growing be to your honor and glory today and forever. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I offer you the peace of Christ that it may fill you this day. Christ is the source of our joy and gladness. Receive Christ's peace. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Word made flesh. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Open your eyes to see the kingdom God is creating in our midst. This morning I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. It is out of the message translation, and it reads as this. Listen for the word of God. When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethphage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her, bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king is on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey on a colt full of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and the colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds following, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son, blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in the highest heavens. He made his entrance in Jerusalem. The whole city was shaken. Unnerved people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this. This is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Several years ago, I had an administrative assistant named Rosanna. We had been working in preparation for our Palm Sunday service, and we were considering which way to go with the program. She had questions about the common lectionary, which had two sections for this Sunday. It had two sections of scriptures suggested, one for Christ the King Sunday, also known as Palm Sunday, and the other listing the scriptures for Passion Sunday. Rosanna asked me, Pastor, which one do you want? There are two sets of scriptures for today. I don't know what to use. I responded, yes, you're right. There are two sets of scriptures for this Sunday, one for Passion Sunday and the other for Palm Sunday. She then asked, well, what's the difference? I told her that Passion Sunday is the day we look towards the passion of Christ, towards the great love for us that takes him through a very difficult week as he journeys on the cross. And Palm Sunday is when we acknowledge Jesus' triumphant entry into, into Jerusalem. With shouts of Hosanna and palms waving, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. She asked, well then, why have both? Why are we giving choices? I liked her and I said, because both are absolutely necessary. 
We rejoice at the one who comes to save us, and we realize the great trials that Jesus had to go through in order to save us. The triumphant entrance, the painful way to the cross. She said, that sounds too hard, I don't like it. I agreed, it is too hard. I don't like it either. This is a Sunday that has joy and sorrow all wrapped up into one. Rosanna and I kept talking and we thought about how fickle our love as humans could be. How the people in Jesus' time could go from loving him on Sunday and waving palms and blessing his name to becoming an angry and unrelenting mob, shouting crucify him by Friday. In at least a couple of cases on Thursday evening, Jesus' own beloved disciples went from sharing bread with him at a table to turning him over to the hands of the authorities. And another one denying he even knew Jesus all in the course of less than 12 hours. We have read about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem in the scriptures this morning in the passage from Matthew 21. We will read about Jesus' journey to the cross from Matthew 26, verses 14 through chapter 27, verse 66, over the course of the week to come. But getting back to this moment, this moment, we humans can love someone or even something in one moment and then immediately decide to harbor hate or disdain or hurtful judgment of the same person or thing in the next moment. Our love seems to change as quickly as the wind blows or our situations change. It happened that way to Jesus. When he emerged on the public scene, he was an overnight sensation. Everybody loved him. Everyone wanted to get near him. Everyone wanted to see him. He would try to go off to be alone, and the people would still follow him. The masses lined up in the streets when he came into town. And he did come into town, riding on the colt. At that point, we have disciples making pronouncements of Jesus. We have Jesus' disciples and followers walking with him and praising him. In that entourage, there's James and John, Peter, Thomas, Andrew, Judas, Mary, and Martha, and their brother, their brother who had just been re resurrected from the dead, raised from the dead. Lazarus was probably there. There are victory shouts for all these miracles. We've already heard of the blind having been given sight the sick who were healed, the deaf who can hear, the dead one that had been raised to life. People had been delivered from demons and lepers had been made whole with just a few words from Jesus. So the shouts echoed through the crowd. There's a lot of singing. There's a lot of waving. There's a lot of chanting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I imagine in all of that there's a lot of laughter and excitement and jubilee. There are people taking their shirts off and off their backs and throwing them on the ground before him so that the colt can walk over them, making the way for Jesus as he rides in on this donkey. Others in the crowd are laying palm branches on the road in front of Jesus as he's progressing into the great city for the Passover. The crowd is ecstatic to see the myth, the legend they have been hearing so much about this miracle worker. The healer, the great teacher, the prophet, the promised Messiah even. This must be their promised king to Israel, the deliverer. Jesus is getting the honor that generals usually get as they enter their home city after winning a great battle, and many people come to see him. I can imagine some of the 5,000 who were fed are right there right now. Some of those who have been healed are there. Some of those who have been raised are there. Those who have been touched by his miracles are there. And they're honoring him as a great king and deliverer and singing to him, Hosanna, which means the one who saves us. It's a cry out for saving in some translations. Lord, save us now. Hosanna, Lord, save us now. Are any of you clamoring Hosanna today? Are any one of us crying out, Lord, save us? Any one of us need a Savior?
right now? And if so, from what is it that you need to be saved? Many persons have passed along this phrase that this is the lentiest Lent they've ever lented. It seems as if our sheltering in place and our quarantines and our limitations of Corona and COVID-19 are forcing us to not only stay in place, but to be left to our own thoughts, our own frailties, our own devices. In doing so, I wonder, is Corona the biggest threat to our lives? For sure, it's a severe threat to our bodies and earthly life, but I'm left to wonder if breath in our lungs is the only measurement of life for us. Jesus didn't have to walk into Jerusalem to put breath into the lungs of the people. Jesus walked into Jerusalem to liberate, to set free, to produce a measurement of life that would be greater than even breath itself. Jesus walked into Jerusalem to give life through his love, to be God's love in the flesh incarnate for us. This love disarms us because it's nonviolent. It's the most powerful force in the universe. The greatest of these is love because God is love. This is the life-giving power that Christ has. This is what Jesus brings. When Jesus processes into Jerusalem on that donkey, his love enters their world. And it meets them right there where they are. In those moments when the disciples, believers, hopeful seekers, and even just the curious exclaim, Lord, save us, Hosanna. And so I ask again, from what do we want to be saved? During this Lent, have you noticed that we're finding out more about ourselves and others? Are you seeing incredible evil in greed and consumerism, selfishness and hoarding? Have you noticed a particular sense of self-reliance or disconnectedness? Our once perceived ideas of security, are those becoming proven as flawed? Those senses of security of finances and comfort and power, possession, health, family, freedoms, mobility, lifestyle, and choice. Do we need to be saved for our own thoughts, perhaps? Those thoughts of despair or hopelessness, doubts, anxieties, fears, impatience, the desire for comfort? Do we need to be saved from our self-destructive patterns of addictions and violence, of deceptions, of self-harming and self-deprecating? Do we need to be saved from the ways we harm each other, possibly based on a number of discriminations, age, gender, sexual orientation, political views, ethnicity, culture, intellect, professional abilities, disabilities? Do we need to be saved from being cut off, disconnected from humanity, or God, or creation? Several years ago, when my son AJ was about four years ago, he got into trouble. I was scolding him, and I, as I was scolding him, he finally looked up at me. With tears in his own eyes, he said, but mom, can I please have grace? We want grace. Hosanna, save us. We want grace. Even now we receive grace. Have you seen or heard of amazing acts of generosity, sacrifice, and care going on these days? Neighbors are taking care of neighbors. Volunteers are helping out in food pantries and support services. Persons are coming out of retirement for helping and to staff the hospitals. Others are making masks. First responders are rushing to help. Medical personnel are risking their very lives. And hospital staffers and cleaning services for the medical facilities are risking their very lives to help. Grocery clerks, truckers, delivery drivers, child care providers for those who are essential workers, to persons coming out of retirement and doctors 
even doctors dying after caring for COVID patients. Grace, unmerited. This place of God extending love to us even before we knew we needed it or that we could deserve it. In fact, we don't deserve it. That kind of grace is always present. It's prevented. It comes before we know we need it. But then there are those times when we figure out we absolutely need grace. We look up with tears in our eyes and we know that we've been convicted of our attitudes or our habits or our sins or our shortcomings. When we have outright gone against the Lord and we cry out, Lord, save us. Forgive us. Teach us a different way. In the scripture for today, up to this point, Jesus' message had largely been one of provenient grace, that grace freely offered, that grace without cost, that grace that is not merited by ourselves. Grace. That's how the 5,000 hungry were fed. That's how he healed the sick. That's how the woman in caught in adultery and about to be stoned, was let loose. That message of his ministry was grace upon grace. But with these scriptures, Jesus seems to be saying, it's time for us to redefine this relationship. Redefine this exchange of grace. Something else is going on here. It's time that we walk into Holy Week to understand following Jesus to the cross will require something. After all, there's absolutely no way to follow Jesus without Jesus interfering with your life. It's going to get messy. God's going to do something in you. You will be changed. You will and must be changed. How you define your life and the measurement of your life in relationship to God in Christ. The one who comes in the name of the Lord will change your life. And that convicting grace will cause havoc on us, as you probably already know. It will bring a different kind of grace, a different way of living that is sanctifying us, making us more holy in the ways of Christ. It will cause us to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. I can imagine some of us have been shaken through the events of the past weeks. Our entire world has had a shaking. The religious, political, and cultural systems, the financial, social, institutional structures, all have been disrupted, making us uncomfortable and unsure causing an imbalance, if you will. The last time Jerusalem was in turmoil, it was at Jesus' birth. Now they're in turmoil near Jesus' death. Jesus never takes it easy on us. Jesus didn't promise it would be easy. Jesus at work in our life is not meant to be leisurely or at our leisure. I know we like the status quo, the, things, the way things are most of the time, and don't want to be shaken up. So it unnerves us when Jesus disrupts us. Jesus did not come to hold the status quo. How can you save if you keep things the same way? Instead, Jesus came to save the world from itself. Salvation shakes things up, and it should shake us up. It's not until we are shaken that we may realize that we are in the presence of the Most High King, the one who can save us. Jesus never came to make us comfortable or comfy. Cozy Christians are not faithful disciples. Jesus came to change the world and us because of love. We follow Jesus to the cross, being perfected in love. And that takes work, intentionality, purpose, focus, and energy. It takes us being willing to give our lives over to Christ and let Christ do what Christ does best. Save us. Today, Jesus is riding on his donkey and he's coming your way. And it doesn't even look like a triumph, right? It seems more like a funeral procession for his impending death. I think I can even hear someone in the crowd shouting, Dead man walking! As Jesus goes by, the people are in turmoil. 
shaken perhaps, not because it is his impending funeral, but because it is their own. Their lives will be changed. He leads the procession that will end life as we know it. The people are shaken because they don't want to die to themselves. They like things the way it's always been. They want to be comfortable. And yet, and yet we cry, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Save us from ourselves. Help us save each other. Give us life, Lord. And in your sanctifying grace, may there be less of me and more of thee. May your life be expressed in mine. May your walk be my walk. There is a death walk this week. Christ's walk is our own walk. Maybe it will shake us up out of our slumber. But no, know that this is not the end of the world. It's the beginning of a new one. It's new life. And it's a life full of grace. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. As we come before God and the one who saves us, pleading Hosanna, I invite you to join me in the prayer for each other, for our communities, for the body of Christ, and for the world. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you alone dwell in us and provide for our safety. You are our refuge and our shelter. For all who are effect, affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, we pray that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors and nurses and medical researchers, for those who are staffing the hospitals and cleaning the facilities, we pray that through their skill and insights and works, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear our prayers. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Rest in your presence. Lord, hear our prayers. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God, merciful Father. We pray that you hear our prayers. And we pray collectively in one voice, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I would like to remind you that we will have worship throughout this Holy Week, and so on Thursday, Monday, Thursday, we will have a service uh, posted onto umcmerced.org forward slash worship. We'll also have one for Good Friday and, of course, Easter Sunday. We look forward to you uh, joining us with us again. And now, and now I'd like to send you forth with a blessing. Passing from joy into sorrow and on to elation, we come to Christ this Holy Week. Today is only a part of the story. Jesus' triumph leads to his death, his death to our resurrection. May the journey of this week lead you into the fullness of Christ's love and life, and may you be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit today and always. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.